All right, what's going on, guys? It is season three, episode Uno. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for coming back. Thank you. Um, we got a lot of messages from you all on how anticipating this season was and how much they missed us on the off season, which is is humbling to say the least. So yeah. thank you guys for that. I was just about to say humbling to say the least. Like that's um, exactly it. Like it, there's been, it's, I don't know, it's pretty awesome what God's doing that like we're still connecting with a lot of people on like a much more personal level in right. between seasons. You know what I mean? Like we message with a lot of people and email with a lot of people in the meantime. Um, so if that's you, thanks. Um, and thanks for telling people about the podcast now that we're back. Thanks for sharing this and we're excited. Yeah. Um, God has a lot of really, really, really big things in store for this season. Yeah. Um, like we can, we already have some big, big stuff lined up. And Good I'm interviews. Really excited. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because I was just thinking that of how unique it is for New us York. to, um, unique New York, yeah. <laughs> reference, movie reference, if anyone knows what that is. It's the only movie that I can like quote things from. Like, <laughs> I think, I, I think we did that. Let the like somewhere in season two too. I think we did that like literally that exact same interchange. Probably. Like it might as well been a clip we copied and pasted. <laughs> it was surprise me. See, it's the only movie that I quote. <laughs> um, Anchorman, in case you guys know. But uh, I, I just think it's unique because we do still remain in contact with people in the off season. Um, and so, and I say that because I want you guys to realize that we do this because we genuinely care about all of your guys' walk mm -hmm. with God. That, that we care about your relationship with Jesus, and that's yep. why we do it, and that's why we tell you that, because people still message us. Yep. They still email us. They still reach out and say, hey, man, I, I don't know what to do with my car rides now because I don't have these on Mondays. And it's just, it's it's neat to, yep. to have that you know interaction and exchange with, with people that were strangers just a year and a half ago, and now we're actually starting to build bonds. Yeah, and like, just how far God took this. Like, this isn't... This is not just a podcast. Like this is um, a ministry where we are. Our mission is to inspire you to step towards brotherhood, um, wherever that step may be in your journey. Um, and so, whether we're recording a podcast or not, like that's still happening. Um, so okay. that's, that I think that's been um, like to the unasked question. Like that's probably been my favorite part of what's been going on the past couple weeks in regards to brothers and Mary. Um, since we stopped recording season two and, and are back to three. That's definitely yep. been my favorite part is just the flourishing and growth of the ministry part outside of this right now, outside of the podcast. Right. right. And, you know, and the fireside studies, I mean, yep. I've gotten, I know you have oh, yeah. tons of feedback on that. Um, so if you guys are listening to this season two is out. Um, the three topics that we're talking about this season are, identity, intentionality, and then embracing the uncomfortable. Yeah. So there are three things that we think are extremely important in our walks, not just with the Lord, but with each other. Yep. So we wanted to address them. And the way we did it in season one, how we just kind of broke down each one into our thoughts, but other ways and avenues to find more information on that. Okay. Um, we did the same exact thing in this season because that was the feedback that we got from you guys. Like okay. You enjoyed that um, format. You enjoyed us letting you know how to find these things, where to find these things, who to find them from. Yep. So uh, we did basically the same exact thing in season two, and really hope you guys enjoy it um, as much as we all did here. Yeah, absolutely. And that it's awesome because those were like those topics were like a no brainer when we right. thought through. Like, hmm, what topics did we talk about the most during season two? And like we mentioned this during the fireside studies when we recorded it. Um, but. Like, like, Marty, in his episode, when we recorded him for the second time, shout out, YouTube, you can, I just kidding, can't see him. Yeah, he's awful. Um, <laughs> but, um, he, uh, he, like, said, he, was, he said, at the very end of his episode, he said, like, it's about being uncomfortable, and, like, and intentionality, and identity, like, I don't remember the exact phrasing of how he said it, but he said all three of those things. And then he was like, I feel like that's something we talked a lot about this season. And we were like, uh, yep. yep. Ding, 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 ding. That is what we're going to do for Fireside. Yep. Um, and it's, I don't know, they're they're super just, like, important, obviously. I mean, we don't need to talk about it now. You can go watch the go watch the Fireside study, and, and you'll get more about it there. But, um, 
Yeah. Well, that and that transitions um, lead to the next point, which is YouTube in general. So, if you guys are just starting to follow us in season three, hey, hey. we're waving at you. If you're listening to this on the road, you can't see us waving, but still wave back. <laughs> um, but you're gonna look like a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, you will. But um, YouTube has been another platform that we started to utilize yeah. for our ministry to just get the content out there more. Um, the first two seasons are just static pictures, but it gives people that utilize YouTube throughout their workday mm -hmm. a, um, a way to listen to our episodes. But starting now here in season three, as you guys are seeing for the first time on season three, episode one, as we, you know, give you the peace sign. Time drink. Um, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, you can now see us and, and watch the videos yep. of the um, interviews. So that was a really cool way we're stoked about that here at Brothers of Marriage because it was a, a just a different way for us to interact with you um, yeah. at I home watching now rather than just listening. You can start to put the words and names and content to the faces of us sitting behind the mic. And that is good for uh, many people. And some of us just need that visual mm -hmm. way to interact. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I, like we had some fun with like even Pete, the r 2 d and some droids and stuff in the background oh, since yeah. we're also a, a we're a shadow Star Wars podcast. Um, <laughs> um, Closet. <laughs> um, John Langfeld, shout out, hates the fact that I said that. Um, yeah, but um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, and I'm super excited about it because we're going to be able to reach a lot more people, and guys going to do some really cool stuff with uh, with what we're doing with with YouTube. So I'm, I'm really I'm pumped about that. But enough about what's happened with us. Right, Brandon, or enough about Brothers of Merit in general, Brandon. Yeah, actually, I guess well, we didn't talk. We didn't even it. talk about this, but do we want to do the questions to Terry to each other? Yeah, why not? Because you always do this to me on the air every single time. <laughs> yeah, see that. Welcome, right? Welcome, Welcome back. Welcome back. I, I literally have no idea this is even happening. Sure. Not, which is which is fine for you because you always come up with them on the spot. Yeah, I do. I, so what I'm doing actually is I'm throwing myself onto the bus right now because I always need to look it up. And I'm going to make you go first. So. I just need to look it up. Right. Okay. Oh, boy, we're going. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there was a turn on you. Okay. Again. What? <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Um, what was in your high school locker? Which locker? Sports locker. Yes. All, oh, my sports locker. So, I only got a sports locker for winter and spring seasons because it was wrestling and lacrosse. So, they gave us a locker. Um, it was a lot of your typical high school stuff in regards to nasty clothes. <laughs> um, That's fair. That's fair. It had my headgear in it for wrestling. Um, we didn't have to wear it at practices, but because of practices, we didn't need it. So, um, we only wore it at matches. So okay. that's that, that was in there. So you could like see the smell coming out of your locker. Oh yeah, visually, um, <laughs> just mentally. Just green stench. Absolutely. And then you mix it all because we all shared the same locker room, football, lacrosse, um, wrestling and basketball in the winter months. Um, and the, it wasn't too bad though because football was in the um, yeah. fall where we live in Maryland. I know some people listening to this, it's it's different. It's actually fall and soccer are in different um seasons but uh here in maryland fall and soccer are all in the fall but uh yeah you shared it with the baseball players and things like that so okay uh, it wasn't really anything any standout ish just um, your typical sports stuff and it all smelled yeah like you're you know just your normal jock of high school right. three right. student or three sport athlete okay so right. what, uh, i'm not gonna say what about you because i'm gonna ask you i'll ask you something else there you go then we'll go on the fly all right, so that's if you how, could... That's how we operate. He yeah. acts like he hates it, but he loves it. No, I still hate it. Um, <laughs> if you could relate yourself to any actor, Holy who would it be and why? <clears throat> and you can't say Han Solo. <laughs> Same way that. <laughs> if I could relate myself to any actor, are we talking movie character or are we talking like yeah. the actor themselves? Let's do and a I'm not movie character. Say, and I'm not allowed to say... So, yeah, because I knew you were going to go for that. So, um, do I was, was going to say that. Um, Pee Wee Herman? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep, nailed it. Um, I think that um, um, my second thought was like, I, know, I could foreshadow and I could talk about a movie that we're going to talk about in an upcoming episode, but I'm not going to do that. Nope. Um, I, okay, so the, my 
like what immediately came to my mind, I can't necessarily relate to him because he's like just like the greatest of all time. But like my favorite sports movie to keep on the sports topic um, is Miracle. Okay, so that's a good one. Herb Brooks. Yep. Um, and Kurt Russell who played him in that would probably be like I said I can't relate to him because that dude was way more awesome than I'll ever be in regards to leadership and coaching and things like that. But I just love, there's tons of, um, and we've talked about this at length, actually, on the podcast and in episodes in the past about how impactful um, Coach Josh Beers was to me in my college right. career, like we talked about with Grant in season two, but um, he talked a lot to us about leadership and things like that, and there's a lot of things that, like, once, like, I learned about leadership, um, there's a lot of things that, like, I, like, picked up on about Coach Brooks in that movie that were like real about like the dude's life like little things like little things like how he cared for like his wife like he he had to be like he uprooted his whole life and you know had to pursue this and, and yeah. put their family dreams on hold so that he could pursue this dream and and he like there's times when like he's so focused on coaching and then like he stops and he's like he takes time to like listen to her and stuff like and but then, and then, like, from a coaching perspective, um, my favorite thing, and this is kind of a side tangent, but, you know, whatever. Um, my favorite part of the whole movie, actually, is when they win. Um, spoiler alert, we beat the Russians. Um, <laughs> still a couple years ago. But, uh, um, he, uh, when, when, like, the United States wins, everyone goes crazy. The bench is clear and, like, you know, everything like that. And Kurt Russell goes into the hallway. I don't know if, like, you remember yep. that, but... Oh, yeah, 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 He goes in the hallway by himself, and he, like, actually, like, acts excited, and gets pumped, and fist pumps, and stuff like that. And then goes back out. And so, that moment, to me, like, from, like, what that shows me is, is a couple of things. Like, one, um, he, like, kept his, like, face on of, like, composure when he was in front of other people. But, like, that was, like, the moment he had been. So, he had to, like, go... Just, he had to go get that out anyway. Yep. But then also... He, like, he let his guys shine in that moment. He didn't overtake them there. Like, like he, like, you watch the movie, and he's the one who orchestrated everything. Like, I don't need the right, I, I'm not looking for the best players, I'm looking for the right ones. Like, if he wasn't the coach of that team, you United States probably doesn't win that game, right? Yeah. And he, like, has every right to, like, take all the credit for the fact that we won that game. But he, like, lets them live in the spotlight. And he goes and celebrates in quiet and lets... And there's a lot of leadership stuff there that I just, I love. And so, uh, that's it going. That was a side note. <laughs> Tangent, we're playing on the rabbit hole. Uh, it's okay. It was, right, one uh, more. it was good. One more each. Hey, do it. Go. Whoa, another, another course. Go. Okay. Go. Uh, favorite smoothie flavor. Uh, from Smoothie King, I'm going to go with the banana boat with adding peanut butter. Ooh. That is extremely that's specific good. because it's the only one I've ever it's gotten from Smoothie King. <laughs> And at the training academy at work, since I'm assigned there as an instructor, there's one right down the street. So okay. my, my buddies there got me stuck on that. So it's a banana boat. It's got the banana, um, the protein aspect, and you add peanut butter into it. I love that. So, all right, the last one for you. What was your first make and model of car cool. when, in your life? I have no idea. You had no I'm not idea. a car guy. I genuinely have no idea. What was the first vehicle you, you drove? When I you don't had, remember. Oh, my God. <laughs> I actually have no idea. It's probably like a Honda Accord, like 1995. I don't remember. All right. I well, <laughs> that wasn't a good question. I, liter I literally have no idea. I'm thinking of a couple that I've driven. If those of you that know me know that in high school I had quite the the reputation for not being the greatest driver. So there's a couple cars that come to mind that I drove in total, um, but I don't know what the first one was. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, that was an easy question. Oh man. Okay, so I guess moving on from that, Brandon, you've had a, a heck of a last six weeks. Yeah, like eight weeks, whatever it's been. It has been. Uh, I guess it's been longer for those. Like at the time of recording, it's been what three months probably since we recorded the last one. But yeah. um, from where we are now, um, January, February, Brandon, you've done a lot. So yeah. So let, um, let the listeners in. Yeah, so I don't think we ever, because I, I got them put in the end of last season, but 
There you go. In case you guys don't know, I do have braces now. Hey, I'll give them a big toothy grin. So, uh... There's a reason to go to YouTube. Yeah, go <laughs> see that ugly <laughs> mug now, these metal things in my teeth. Um, so I got braces put in, so if any of you ever hear me start to stumble with my words more than normal, it's because my lips are getting stuck to my braces. Um, if anyone has had braces before and you're listening to this, you can 100% understand what I'm going through. So, uh, you can remember that because you were 13. Yep, and not over 30, <laughs> absolutely. Can we yeah. also understand that? That's a good point. So yeah, I got my braces put in, um, and then I went out to tech school with the Air Force, because you guys know I went from the Army Guard to the Air Guard. So I went out to tech school in uh, Mississippi, Biloxi, which is uh, Keesler Air Force Base for the Religious Affairs Airmen course for the Chaplain Corps. Um, so I completed that. I actually just got back about four days ago. I was gone for almost two months. Um, so I graduated that, and now I'm just on my journey. Did that? Yep, and I'm going to, like, I, I interrupted you because I know there's more to that story that you're not going to tell yourself. Yeah. Um, not only did this man graduate, but he was. Uh, uh, you're gonna make me say. Fill in the blank. So because yeah. I don't know what the actual title um, is. So I was say. the distinguished graduate of yeah. the class. Yeah. I'm the one saying it. You can you can still be humble and talk about yourself. Right. I'm the one saying it. So basically, fine. Basically, what that word is is there's two. There's top graduate, mm -hmm. which is who has the highest um, average of tests. So and that's just a completely objective number. Yep, that's, that's based, based, based off your test scores. Mm -hmm. And then there's the di distinguished graduate who has a higher score, um, but it's also based upon votes from your class. So I had a overall 96% um, average, which I think that's about halfway decent. I, I tried my best. It's a little better than halfway. Right. <laughs> I don't think. Um, but what really, what really um, stuck out to me was the fact that my my classmates voted that. Okay. You know what I mean? So the advice my chaplain gave before I left was don't go and focus solely on the academics. Pass. Obviously, go and learn. Um, but focus on the people. Focus on making relationships um, and just being that image of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I listened to him and I went there. I just actively engaged in the people's lives. There was you know, 20 of us in my class and I just learned about everyone. I that's my personality to begin with, especially you guys that know me. I, I really do care about people. That's one of the better qualities that I have is I can just relate and connect with people pretty well. But um, I don't know. It just came natural to me, and I just I genuinely cared about them and wanted to learn. And that obviously stuck out because at the end of the class, literally the day before we graduate, they give you a paper, has all our names on it, and they say rate them. And I didn't find out until... I graduated, so you had graduation practice, okay. and they just said, and the you know the award that goes to blank. So everyone still had no idea. So mm. it wasn't until at the legit sure. graduation, my wife like sitting behind me, did they say, you know, the distinguished graduate goes to, and she was like, I can't believe we let a prior army guy win this award, and she was you know called my name. I was like, holy smokes, like yeah. I cannot believe that you yeah. know, that happened, but. No, and I love it, and that's and I know obviously like that's uncomfortable for you because you're humble and, and it's just talking about stuff. myself. Yeah, no, and right. I and I get that, but the reason why I wanted to make sure that we bring that up is twofold. One, selfishly and, per and personally, like I'm super proud of you for that. Right. Um, and B, I think that it's important. Like it's one of the reasons. Like like when Brittany was going down there, Brandon's wife was going down. I was like, hey, like, can you make sure you grab some pictures and stuff? Because Brandon's been really transparent and vulnerable about letting people into this story. Ever since the, even the beginning of Brothers Merit, he's let people into what's going on with the chaplain and, like, the fact that God laid this on his heart and he's going to go after it and he's going to and um, he's gonna pursue this dream and this goal that he feels like God's set before him. Um, so can you, like, I think it's important to share the story. And so, yeah. um, and so then when she texted me that, I was like, Holy smokes, like that's, and I was literally like, we need to like celebrate that win big time. And Brandon texted me and was like, don't you dare. Yeah, it's kind of funny. He literally was like, I, I use, did. He was like, use this. She sent me like a bunch of pictures of like him and like looking at the distinguished thing. And he was like, use this picture, do not use those pictures, and do not post about the distinguished thing. <laughs> so I, like, I get, happened. so like, I get, again, I apologize publicly here about putting you on the spot to, to talk about oh, you that. You do it all but, the time, so it's all right. It's fair. Um, <laughs> I apologize for this moment and this moment alone. Um, <laughs> but, um, 
but like I said, I think it's important because like I said, you've, you've vulnerably let people in. And so they've seen, they've seen this be like just a thought in your mind. Like they've seen the seed planted. Um, if you've listened from the beginning, if you haven't, go ahead and listen back. Like Brandon talking about how, like, you know what? I feel like God's calling me to do this. I feel like, and then he intentionally went after it and, and then he did it really well. Um, and God worked through them in big, big ways. And so, um, like, again, I know it's awkward and all that. So I do apologize for putting you on the spot there, but I think it's important to celebrate that word. So, no, I, I appreciate the words. I just, my biggest thing is that, um, I just enjoy doing any type of work I can, uh, for the kingdom, the overall, um, and whether, um, big gift. yeah, exactly. Big K, like I said, <laughs> well, you guys will hear that in a couple episodes here. Um, you say that, but, um, whether it's I'm working with other Christians, and this is, and the unique part about my job is I'm obviously I'm not a chaplain yet, like that's my goal. I'm a religious affair, so I'm the enlisted side of the chaplain corps. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm there to provide the spiritual um, and religious needs yeah. of any religion. Sure. Obviously, I am a Christian, and that's what I believe in. Um, but if a Muslim or a Jew or someone needs religious accommodation, I'm there to help them. Um, but for me, I look at how our God created us. And any way that I can help that kingdom, um, I, I'll do whatever I can. And that, that is what intrigues me and pushes me even more. So um, I, just, I just enjoy helping people. And um, I'm, I'm really anxious and eager for the remaining part of this journey. I love it. And that's, and I was actually, I'm, uh, under the table trying to look up the scripture verse that I can't seem to find. So I'm just going to do what I normally do and say somewhere in the New Testament, it um, says something uh, about like, um, and I'm also going to paraphrase the verse, but I love that because it says, it's literally like, like let the gospel be known, like by grace shown through love. Like yeah. that's literally, like that's literally it. Yeah, and so that's like, what I think I do um, best. Like, I, I try, and I do read my Bible pretty much every day. Um, and I try and try and try to memorize things. But what you said, I show my most grace through just my love and care for people. Like, that is who I am, and you guys know that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I can't verbally get things out that I want to or can't remember a certain scripture that I'm thinking of verbatim off the top of my head. But I can genuinely sit down with you, and you'll know that I care. You know that I will be want to be there and learn about you and try to help you any way I can. Um, it's hard for you guys to experience that because you're on the other end of a, you know, a, a radio or a, a, a iPhone right now listening. Sure. But if you guys were able to you know, sit down with me, you would do that. I'm not saying that in a bragging or conceited way. I'm saying that in just God creates us all unique. And we all have our own mission based off of what his mission is for us. Sure. So, um, but yeah. at the same, and at the same time, we've said this before, um, like that is, that's a gift and you do that really, really well. Um, but at the same time that, I mean, that's literally, that is literally what the gospel is about. Like yep. it says in Corinth, in first Corinthians, maybe, <laughs> either first or second Corinthians. That one I know is one of the Corinthians. Um, Let's just says, make the New Testament. Where there you say go, that? No, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's crazy. Um, it talks about like if I like if I have if basically like if I have if I speak with the sound of you know whatever it's a banging symbol if it's not for love like that's that is which I've actually like that's one of the things that I've kept, that's been kind of like laid on my heart the past couple of weeks because like we speak into a microphone and like those are things right. that like. Like our message that we're, that we're doing, like the ministry that we're doing is through our words. And if we're, even if we speak with the sound of, you know, whatever the verse is, which is terrible, that I don't know. Um, which like the, the, uh, you're human. It's okay. Thank you. Um, like if, if we're speaking as eloquently as possible and if we're speaking even with like the sound of angels, I believe is what it says. It is, it is, but it is like the sound of a, a clanging cymbal yep. if you don't have love. And right. so like, again, that's been super uh, encouraging to see you go through that. And then also, like I said, I think it's encouraging for the listeners to hear that. If you're listening right now, like that's, I mean, that's what it's about right there. Yeah. Like that's my entire, let's live our lives that way, right? All I know how to do, this is going to sound weird, but everything in my life is based around other serving other people like from the minute i turned 16 became a firefighter 
the minute I turned 19, joined the military, up until now when I'm approaching 30, um, like a, a year away, which so I'm getting towards that part. It just it shows you the years of yep. everything I do is based around helping somebody else before my, you know, myself and all. So um, it just comes naturally, I think. But my, you know, I, I just hope everything that we talked about here in this podcast intrigues someone else and a listener to go about something that may make them uncomfortable, but but yeah. but help that person out. If that's not your thing, if you're more, you know, introverted. But you're feeling called to talk with somebody or pray for somebody or whatever. Just I hope that you find that strength and pursue that calling. Um, that's that that's my hope and prayer for everyone listening right now. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. And then and I love that you just talked about serving and um, almost trying to find um, in Romans twelve because that's what um, our local pastor Reed talks about at Crossroads. Um, we're going through a sermon, going through Romans 12 right now, a sermon series. And um, I am, let me give me one second here to try to find it. If I can't, I'm just going to do what I always do and paraphrase. And I can't find it. But it talks about, paraphrase. <laughs> and it talks about in Romans 12, like it, um, like one of the points that he made in the sermon this past Sunday was um, how you are like refilled, like how like our cup is refilled and our like, our energy and everything like through the Lord is by serving, right? Which is so mm. counterintuitive to like, especially in today. We've talked about this. I know we've talked about this on the podcast before. Um, it's so counterintuitive to culture today. Like, oh, like I need to take some me time. I need to take a self-help day. And I'm not saying anything bad about those things, but that's how we think we want to like refill ourselves. Right. Like, oh, I'm burned out. I'm really tired because I've been working really hard. I need to just take some me time. The Bible says like in Romans 12, it says, the way you get filled up is by serving others. other people. Like, pour yourself out more, and that's going to give you the energy. That's going to fill you up. That's what God is going to, like, use to, like, pour back into your lives. You pour out more for the kingdom, and then he'll be the one that fulfills yeah. you up. Because yeah. you're not going to be able to fill your cup enough anyway. Because you're going to go take that self-help day, and you're going to sit on the couch and sleep for 12 hours, and then you're going to still be tired the next day. Maybe you're going to be fine for one more day, but a week later... You're going to be empty again. It cuts and you're much. just going to have to keep doing that. And it's, it's just, a, it's an endless cycle. But if you give it over to the Lord and you serve and pour out more for him, like Go that's going to fill you. That's going to fill you up. Absolutely. So I love it. Let's again, a little, that's a right. little trail based and, on what you said, but I love it. Yeah. Enough about me. Yeah. I don't want to talk. To that. That's why I like this <laughs> podcast. We only get to interview other people. So I never really have to talk about right. anything personal besides the jokes here and there. So what about you, man? What's going on? <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, it's been good. I haven't done anything nearly as exciting as you did. Um, we bought a lot of animals. You did. <laughs> that's really been the biggest thing that's happened in my, in my past, like, six weeks in my personal life. Um, is, uh, well, actually, like, that's cool, and I'll, I'll talk about it really briefly here, but, um, so Amber, my wife, um, and her sister, they kind of, like, they are doing like a little bit of like a ministry, like kind of like they just want to pour out and they just want to love on people. And they want to do that through our house and, and what God's blessed us with here. Um, and the way that they grew up doing that is through um, like with just spending time with people and um, doing like crafts and gardening and having animals and stuff like that. And we want to teach the girls responsibility with having the animals and stuff Absolutely. like that. So um currently they're in my basement because they're still too small but i got five chickens and a rabbit um, yeah, in my laundry room <laughs> if you hear any chirping um but uh yeah that's been one of the big things um but it's also been really cool just to see um amber go through that um thing it's called she shed sisters i'm gonna shamelessly plug that um she dot shed dot sisters um, say that 10 times fast Man, that's a talk. Don't. I'm pretty sure there's Especially a brace. I'm pretty sure there. I'm pretty sure there's a cuss word in there if you say it fast enough. Said, I'm telling, there's, yeah. a, there's enough that you yeah. probably can. But um <laughs> definitely is good call. But <laughs> but yeah, you can find them on Instagram and all that. And um like I said, it's just uh she dot shed dot sisters. Because we have a shed in our backyard that they are, they are sisters verding. And, and they, they are sisters. Sheaves. And so they're making a she shed that's gonna be a place for like community and stuff. And we boast about it on Brothers of Merit because, um, and again, I'm not going to go too long on the diatribe here because 
exactly what I'm about to say. Um, we think community is important for everybody, Absolutely. men and women. We just speak to brothers of merit here because we're guys. So we also firmly believe that there's a big difference between men and women. And so I can't tell a woman how to do community because I'm not one. Um, <laughs> that is a so. unique character. So, no right. And so, like, we don't know that it's super important and we're by no means trying to leave anybody out. But yeah. um, so we're going to and not just because I'm uh, married to one of the people that started that, but we're going to plug people that are, that are going to yeah. do the same thing for that. So if you know a female or a woman, that right. if you're married, you know out. somebody or whatever, send go to the away. show notes. We'll, uh, 100%. we'll attach it in there for the link. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, been, uh, that's, been a, that's been a fun part of what's been going on in my life too, personally. And then just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, if you if you really have been following along, um, at the end of season two, Brandon pulled a tailor, and he asked me on the spot, he said, so what's one thing that you're going to, like, work on? Mm-hmm. And it was, I mean, this is peeling the curtain back. When he asked me that question, um, and if you didn't listen to it, I would encourage you to go back and check out season two wrap-up or whatever. I don't even know what we called it. That's terrible. Yeah. But I don't know. I think it was, it was episode... 12, 16, 15, 14, whatever it was. Uh, the last episode of season two. Season um, two, episode 11? Yeah. Was it? Maybe 12. They all blend together after a while, guys. Don't, <laughs> don't hold that against us. It doesn't matter. But go go uh, check that out. And um, like I said, Brandon pulled a tail and he asked a question on the spot that um, and got me back for a year's worth of doing stuff. That's and uh, he. <laughs> And it was good because I, I genuinely did. He was like, no, I'm going to like push you to answer this question. Like, what's something you want to work on in 2020? And um, I j- so like I said, peeling the curtain back, I genuinely didn't have an answer. Like, I got filibustered for a little second. I said I joked about Star Wars for a little bit. I didn't I didn't Sucker. know the answer. And I up until like I, like the words that were coming out of my mouth were no, really, like what I think I want to work on. And that's when God hit me with intentionality. Like, I literally didn't even know what I was going to say. It was like Michael Scott. Sometimes I start a sentence and I don't even know where I'm going. Um, And uh, so, yeah, so it's been really cool to kind of, like, try to be intentional. Um, Like I said, or not like I said, um, because that hasn't aired yet. (laughs) Um, I am trying to read through the Bible in a year um, and be really intentional to spend um, time, like, more than just reading a verse or two um in the morning um, but spend intentional time in the word um every morning and spend intentional time like with my kids trying to put my phone down in the evenings and spend intentional time dating my wife on a weekly basis and um that's a good one. trying to do trying to do stuff um like actually like again this is like the same thing as like why we wanted to celebrate and this isn't saying we need to celebrate me at all because we don't i've been failing in some of that stuff um but yeah, yeah. why we celebrated like i said why we celebrated that stuff about brandon earlier is because like he was super vulnerable about letting people in and like i think i think that's one of the things that's really cool about like podcasting and like we've talked about that like it's almost like you get to listen to a journal of, of what we of what god's doing um and so three months ago now i guess when you're listening to this i said i want to work on intentionality and uh so i've been trying to do that um and so it's been really cool um god's kind of really like revealed himself to some in some really cool stuff um in my scripture reading and stuff and yeah which is it, intentionality so is hard enough um because the fact of the matter is is that satan will find his way mm. into everything and anything if you let him um so having a firm and you know foundation of intentionality mm-hmm. is is paramount to have in your walk because if not and you're not intentional about something nine times out of ten satan will win 100%. uh it's so much easier to hit that <sighs> snooze button instead of getting up at six o'clock and reading my bible like i should mm-hmm. you know I mean? oh it's so hard for me to just do not disturb that phone and spend the last hour and a half of the evening with my family before bedtime you know so um and and we've talked about it and you know, on this show, you've probably heard it on shows that you listen to everywhere around. In today's world, it's even harder, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, having intentionality, why we talked about it in the season two fireside study series, yeah. is because of how important it is to have that trait. Yeah. Um, so I I I love intentionality, and you've talked about it. Like mm-hmm. I I 
strive or trying to be the most intentional person I can be. Um, that goes hand in hand with just my serving yep. um, aspect. Like that, that is my uh, the trait that um, formed me. But um, yeah, man, that's uh, it's it's awesome to hear that you're reading through the Bible, especially because this semester I start um, the last part of my my degree in religion. I'm starting to get into the meat and potatoes of my, Let's go. Um, like my, my gen eds are done, my electives are done, it's now just my Bible classes. Okay. So I'm, I'm really getting ready to start digging into it, and that is the part I'm most excited about, okay. and nervous at the same time. Nervous for two things. One, I'm nervous for the educational side of it, because um, just, I, I'm learning, this sounds bad, but I'm learning a whole new territory of this book. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, where I'm studying it in a different way than I've ever going to be studying it before. Mm -hmm. I never have. Mm -hmm. um, and two, I'm nervous because of what it's going to pull out of me. I don't know what I've buried inside of me um, in the past that I haven't fully pulled out because I have not dug into that book um, sure. as deep as I'm getting ready to. Yeah. So I'm worried in multiple ways, but I'm also super excited. Yeah. So um, that's that's something to look forward to. But uh, heck yeah, yeah. So that so kind of to what I alluded there of like the questions you put me on the spot there. Um, <laughs> you know it's good. Um, so we talked about like just general like life stuff um, and what's going on in Brothers Merit. But what as we like wrap up here, probably the last like less than 10 minutes here, but yeah. we'll each go back and forth. What's something that God's been teaching you in the past three months that you feel like you want to share Ooh. with uh, the people that are listening? Um, that's a good one, man. Uh, so I think a lot of, um, I'm trying, how should I word this? I struggle a lot with my negativity and I've said this before, in regards to finances. If there was if there is one demon inside of me that wins Satan gets me almost a hundred percent of the time, it's finances. Um, which is amazing because when you take that step back and take off your lenses, which my wife, um, just God bless her, what she tries to do to me day in and day out is humble me in regards to hang on, you can see me now on YouTube, so shout out. Um, but what she tries to do uh, with my attitude in regards to finances and the fact that look at everything we have been blessed with. Mm. Our healthy children, the house and roof over our head, the electrics on. We have two vehicles that run. Subaru struggles every now and then, but I do most of the work on it, so thankfully it, um, that's probably why it runs half the time. But, you know, like, look at everything I have, and... Um, I, I need to just stop being so impatient with the fact that we still got school loans. Hey, guys, it's 2020, and 50 to 75% of you that are listening to this probably have student loans. Mm -hmm. So you can sit right there with me and relate. Um, I just need to accept that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it is what it is, and it's not going to go away tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I need to take my blinders off and be patient yep. and just realize that I do have an amazing wife and kids. Sure. I have an amazing relationship what I think, um, with the Lord, I think it's amazing. And could it be better? Absolutely. We all could be better. Sure. But, um, I know that I wake up every day and serve, um, a mighty God and that right there is enough to keep me going. Um, yeah. so I would say probably I, I could just continuously work on my, um, under, I guess say understanding of finances cause I'm not an idiot. I just, my patience level, hmm. um, and just overall, uh, yeah, I guess you could say patience, but it's not patience like yelling at my wife and kids or patience like that. It's literally just financially based, but, sure. um, that's a demon, uh, that I am just working on continuously. Love so that. what about you? It's good. I actually don't even know the answer to my own question, so I probably should have known you and asked this. Look at that. No, it's I've good. stubbed you more than one. <laughs> um... No, I mean, like I said, it's been uh, it's been really cool to try to read through um, the Bible in a year. Um, like full disclosure, here it is March. I've missed a couple of days. I've had to do some doubles. So um, but um, hey, I've missed a couple of days too. Okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm putting out the new Bible yeah. as well. Right, like it's. I mean, that's. I love that actually. So, um, let me know. It's what we like to call brotherhood here in the business. Um, 
So, uh, the B hood, but at the same time, not like letting like, Hey, I fail, but that means we need both need to be better. Right. right. Like that's actually, so actually side note, that's, that was really cool. I text, like I texted you, I think, uh, three weeks ago. uh yeah, three weeks ago now, at the time of recording. Yeah. Um, and it was just like, Hey, like we haven't seen each other for like a while. And like, we are the brotherhood and not the only brotherhood, but like we're the brotherhood in each other's lives. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? Like, you, I know you're not away from your family, and like, how, how and me, like, just in general, like, how are we doing with our with our walks and stuff like that? And both of us were like, good, could be better. This week I missed a couple of days. I'm um, just got complacent, you know, whatever. Like you said, let Satan win a couple of times, or you know, whatever. And then it was like, all right, well, like, hey, let's text each other a week from now, and let's. The answer needs to be better from both of us. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, yep. it's not like like that's what brotherhood's about, right? Like, it's not like. Hey, like, yeah, I suck too. So let's just suck together. And forever. the good thing about it was <laughs> when I would um, think about passing them on my Bible reading, um, you're the one that popped my head. Um, you know what I mean? And yep. it, it's amazing uh, how that works, like, the accountability. Right. So, and I'm not sitting here um, telling you guys you got to read 75 pages, but even if it's on five minutes, whatever you can fit in mm -hmm. on a daily basis just to connect with the Lord. Sure. That's all he's asking for. Yep. And that's the beauty of, and that's the beauty of, like we said uh, at the beginning of this thing, um, and what we've always said, like our mission is to inspire men to step towards brotherhood, whatever that is. Like if you're set, if you don't read it all, take a step and, and spend five minutes. Yep. One of the things that convicted to me, like if that's, if you're maybe in the same place as me, one of the things that was convicting to me is I would spend five minutes and I felt like I was saying like, I need you to give me more than that. Like it's time to go from milk. To like a little bit more meat here like let's let's mature a little bit further in that and let's try to get through this thing like let's not just that's do five really minutes let's let's get a little deeper um so that's been really cool a from just a discipline and an intentionality standpoint like i think god's been teaching me a lot through that like just consistently spending time with him um like i feel like i don't have like these mass revelations that i like i'm writing down like epiphanies you know what i mean like every day which i think sometimes if I'm being honest, can be a little, like, frustrating. Like, I almost want that. Like, I almost want, like, the big, like, oh, like, I need, like, I, we need to do a podcast episode right now just so I can say what God has revealed to me this morning. Um, we would have so many episodes. <laughs> but there's also mornings when it's like, I just got up and I read. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of, like, I don't know. I think there's a lot of, like, just the discipline and establishing that, that's been really, really cool. Um, there's been a lot of those really cool things, um, like reading through all of Genesis um, and times when, like, these, these guys that are, like, the fathers of our faith, like, even in Hebrews, shoot, I was going to say three, like, so confident, but I think it actually might be six. I don't know, wherever the, wherever the hall of faith is in Hebrews. Um, and it talks about, like, these guys that, you know, like the people that are like the foundations of the faith right from the Old Testament, um, like Abraham and Jacob and, and these guys that like God worked through and did big things and, and started kind of like the lineage of, you know, whatever they were like, Abraham is the father of our faith. I guess like I'll, I'll get to my point here now. Sorry. <laughs> um, like Abraham, he's the father of our faith, but he was it wasn't like he had these huge moments, right? Where like, he was like willing to sacrifice his own son, Isaac, who he waited like 90 years to have. Right. And he didn't believe it was going to happen. And Sarah laughed and that's, and that it was even that like God could even do that. And God was like, why did Sarah just laugh? Like, do you, does she think that I am not God and can't do this? Like, um, like he waited and then God finally gave him Isaac and God was like, Hey, like, I, I need you to, to sacrifice your own, your own son for me. And Abraham's like, okay. Like, he has these huge moments of faith, right? And so it's like, well, surely that's why he's the father of our faith. He also has, like, the next chapter, he is, like, a wimp. And he lies. And because he's like, the Egyptians are going to kill me if they think that she's my wife. So, hey, uh, Sarah, can you pretend to be my sister? So that they don't, you know, like. Right. Because, like, I don't believe that God could get me through this. You know what I mean? Like, li like he was so up and down. And, like, just how relatable it is that, like, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's cool. I think that's one of the reasons why God like chose to use normal people yep. like Abraham and Jacob. And because like, that's relatable. I get that. Like, 
when I'm unfaithful, God's still faithful. Um, so that's been really cool. Because sometimes we hold these people as like, oh my gosh, like Abraham or, you know, jo Joseph, like he was like a rock star of the faith. Like that's what God used him because like he was such a smart guy that, you know, whatever, like he had such a huge faith. It's like, well, actually he was a human being who he had really good moments of faith and he also failed a lot too. Um, and, As we all have. and we all, and we all do that. Yeah. And so it's like, wait a minute, if Abraham is the father of our faith and he had these moments where he failed or, you know, again, Jacob, whatever, go through the list. Um, I don't know. I just think it's, it's cool. And it's, it's really, it's, it's been really cool to like, just see like, that's how God works. He uses, he steps into the mess. He uses the sinful imperfect people he doesn't go, he doesn't he's not looking for the guy who is perfect who is has got everything like eyes dotted and t's crossed he's not looking for that guy you don't need to be that guy for god to show up in your life yeah um and uh yeah so that's been a really cool thing i don't know i, I don't even remember the question that's been a cool thing that guys been teaching me i guess um i don't even remember how we got on that but that's uh it okay dot 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 carry dot, on dot, next dot. question <laughs> Now we'll uh, we'll wrap it up here. Yeah. Um, but like we said at the beginning, we just wanted to thank you guys um, for tuning back in here to season three. And like I just talked about earlier, I mean, you guys have to realize the vulnerability that comes along even just sitting on this side of the um, microphone because it's not. I, I, I don't. Yeah. It's not every person. Who, it, it potentially is now because I said it over the air um, or the episode. But it's not every person you sit there and say. You know, I can really work on the patience with my finances. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. stuff you don't um, typically talk about, you know? So I just want you guys to realize that we do, on this side of Brothers of Mary, take this serious. And 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 really do want you guys to understand that we're in this, I say race just because it's the, um, yep. the same. We're in this race just as much as you guys are. Like, mm -hmm. we're all, all working on things. So we That's can't... Cool. We, we can't say thank you enough for just coming back. Um, we are so um, just ready and looking forward to season yeah. three and what we have in store and the additions that we brought to this ministry and the different platforms we're on now. Okay. Um, we're just doing the best we can to offer you guys the best content that you mm -hmm. can um, and get. I love that real quick because yeah, I actually – um, that reminded me, like when you said that, that reminded me that I wanted to go through our ethos real quick before the end of it um okay. since we had talked we introduced it and we haven't really talked about it on the podcast but um because like like i was just thinking through like right now like man this was a this was a really vulnerable <laughs> vulnerable yeah. episode yeah. um and but it's good um like our ethos here at brothers and Mary, it's written all over the place in here on all yeah. of everything it's written all over is uh be vulnerable be dedicated and be strong um and the reason why it's that and in that order is important, right? And so I just yep. wanted to kind of talk about why we have that there and, and that that is our ethos. Just kind of like, again, peel back the curtain of who we are. And, and because like Brandon just said, you're just as much a part of that. So we have, we've created that. That's what we try to live by here about what we're doing with the ministry. Um, and like I said, the order is super important there, right? Because yep. it starts with being vulnerable and then you be dedicated to the brotherhood that you have. And then that's Maybe how you're strength. strong. That's yeah. how you become strong, right? Like, yeah. I think a lot of times, we've talked about this before, a lot of times, society, yourself, everything is going to convince you, you need to be strong. Be strong on your own. Put yourself up by your own bootstraps. Men need to be, you know, whatever. Even, like, well-meaning, like, Christian platforms are going to say, like, you need to be stronger than that, be better than that, blah, 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 blah whatever. And, like, we're like, actually... The way that I am strong is through brotherhood. Absolutely. Is seeking a... The, the way that I am strong exactly. is by saying, hey, brother, I need to be vulnerable and let you know where I'm weak and here. And what I'm struggling with. And then both of you be dedicated to, like, sharpening each other. And then that's where strength is born. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. So, I, I, like yeah, I said, I it was just a that. little... I just wanted to touch on that real quick. And like I said, that was this has been a vulnerable episode so we're trying to lead through that and just like through example just show hey this is this is what it's about um so like we always said if you don't have brotherhood um go find it yep and if you need help advice anything Heck yeah. there's plenty of episodes that offer it or if you want to reach out to taylor and i or mike just 
want to shout out, give, you know, give us a message and we'll provide and give you anything that we can to help you out. That's why we're here and we're, that's why Brothers of Merit exists. So, uh, yeah. thank you guys again for coming into season three. We're looking forward to it. I know you guys are as well. And we will see you guys next week. See ya. See ya.